Hello friends, uh, welcome to the 20th lecture of uh, Conductive Heat Transfer. In the last lecture, we actually looked at uh, the constant wall temperature laminar natural convection for a particular flat plate. And uh, we looked at the solutions by the similarity method, which is actually the exact solution for the modulate problem. And then we also looked at the integral solution, which is an approximate solution where uh, you assume velocity profiles and uh, integrate them over the boundary layer to and substitute the approximate profiles in the integral equations of the boundary layer and eventually get the expressions for velocity and temperature profiles from which you can actually get the <coughs> shear stress and uh, this will come. So, um, in doing that, we uh, said that we used the squares method where uh, an approximation was made that uh, delta and delta t are of the same size. And in laminar boundary layers, that's not quite a good uh, approximation to make, but it was done in order to get the solution in a rather simplified manner. So, today I'll uh, go through two different uh, approaches that uh, don't assume that delta and delta t are equal, but treat them as separate variables and then uh, use an extra equation to solve for uh, the extra unknown. Uh, the algebra becomes considerably more complex, so uh, anyway I will not uh, solve it to the finish, but uh, show you uh, how it has to be done. And uh, then uh, one of the examples or one of the uh, cases where the boundary layer thicknesses have not been assumed to be equal has been presented in Bejan, who has also presented the results. So I have not been able to uh, derive it to the finish, but uh, I will present whatever results that are available from uh, Bejan's book and uh, leave it to you to uh, check out the algebra. So that will then cover the uh, constant wall temperature laminar natural convection. Then we will look at uh, the constant wall flux case and uh, show that uh, the definition of the Rayleigh number and also the dependence of uh, result number on Rayleigh number, the power of the Rayleigh number would change for the case of a constant wall flux. In fact, uh, Bejan uh, goes on to say that you know the infinite possible boundary conditions and constant wall temperature and constant wall flux are only one of the uh, two of the infinite kinds of conditions that can be available, but are the more common uh, conditions. So then, uh, once we uh, can look at the constant uh, wall flux results, I'll do the uh, order of magnitude to show the dependence on uh, the modified Rayleigh number and uh, also give you the final result of an integral analysis. Okay, so you can uh, have some results available, approximate results available with you for laminar uh, natural convection over a flat plate, vertical flat plate with constant wall flux. Then we will move on to the turbulent flows and uh, we'll discuss uh, one of the classically available integral solutions for uh, turbulent flows and compare it with uh, experimentally measured data available. So this is basically the plan. Let's see how much we can complete in today's lecture. Hope to complete all of it. Otherwise, we'll uh, do it in the next lecture if there is something that we need after today. Okay, so let's move on to the whiteboard and take a look at what we need to do. Okay. So integral solution or laminar natural convection over a vertical flat plate this is what we were doing but now with delta not equal to delta t. This is a 
change that we'll be doing today. Okay, so um, if you uh, recall yesterday's uh, class, we had uh, written down the Baudelaire equations and um, yes. So this is basically what we did. We uh, wrote the velocity profile like this and the temperature profile like this, but assume delta equal to delta t or delta approximately equal to delta t in the squares method. So if I don't do that, then this integration goes up to delta, whereas this integration would go up to delta t, right? So I'll write that t here because we assume delta equal to delta t, these two, they're all both integrated to delta. So if I uh, integrate them to uh, different limits, if I integrate this up to delta and this up to delta t, then uh, what happens is that you'll need to define a ratio of uh, delta t by delta as uh, a certain uh, xi, okay? And uh, using that, so this basically assumes uh, xi equal to 1, so that variable is eliminated. But here there will be one additional uh, variable in addition to the delta and u max, which will be xi. So that's basically what uh, will happen. So um, I'm not going to work out the entire algebra. I've tried to do it uh, on my own. So I would uh, uh, let you uh, try to get these results. So I'll just uh, write down what uh, we uh, get. So we basically will have three unknowns. Uh, so you had u max and delta as two unknowns earlier. Now you'll have a delta t or you'll have a delta t by delta which is called xi. So either delta t or xi will be kept as an unknown and preferably we find xi to be easier because in this integration that uh, we were trying to do um, in the energy equation, this is the momentum equation. Uh, in the energy equation, the integration that we uh, tried to do, okay, so there is a velocity here and there is a temperature profile here. And this is integrated to delta t, so integration from 0 to delta t. So what you will uh, end up doing is to define uh, delta by delta t or delta t by delta as xi and then one of these would actually become uh, xi eta and the other will be a xi eta and then you would, uh, when you get this, there will be a polynomial with the powers of xi in uh, this equation and that will uh, basically what uh, be the difference between uh, what we have done earlier and what we are going to do now. So um, if I come back, I can, um, What we also find is that uh, delta t as well as delta, both of these are of the order of uh, x to the power of 1 by 4, right? So uh, the delta t by delta xi, this quantity is an order initial quantity. That's basically what uh, we find there, okay? So that can be found out by you know, the same thing that we did, c uh, x to the power of m and c 2 x to the power of n that we did. In that uh, thing, if you see, you find that delta as well as delta t um, obey the same rule, so the xi becomes a dimensionless quantity. Okay. So uh, the third equation that you need, you, you actually have uh, the momentum equation and the uh, energy equation in the integral form as uh, two of the equations. The third equation that you need is actually obtained. We use that in deriving the velocity profile, which is uh, you say u del u by del x plus uh, v del u by del y is equal to g beta into t minus t infinity plus mu times del squared u by del y squared. So if I apply this to uh, y is equal to uh, y is equal to 0 plus, that is just adjacent to the wall, Then what happens? I just just adjacent to the wall u as well as v are zero, so this term and this term go off, and this is t wall. So g beta to t wall minus t infinity would be mu times del square u by del y square at y equal to zero. Right? So that will be the expression again. So that will give me the third equation, 
Okay, so with a minus sign of course. Yeah, this that will be the third equation which I'll uh, use here. So if I do that, then I get these three equations. You can uh, verify that. Um, mu psi into C1 by C2 is equal to G beta into C1 minus T infinity. Okay, that comes from this equation. Okay, so this I call it, let us say, as equation A. Then uh, from the momentum equation, I will get this uh, phi xi, phi zeta minus 2 zeta square um, plus zeta q whole thing divided by uh, 80 is into C1, C2 is equal to uh, 2 alpha by C2. So this is basically what you get when uh, you substitute uh, u max equal to C1 x to the power of m and delta equal to C2 x to the power of n. Okay. So when you do this, then what you find is that uh, uh, where xi is, when zeta is dimensionless, then the powers of x cancel out. So then when the x of x powers are cancelled out, then these equations are this. So 2 alpha by C2, this is from the energy equation, this is B. So uh, this is from this equation, this is from integral energy equation. And uh, momentum equation gives me uh, C1 squared C2 uh, divided by 84 zeta uh, is equal to G beta into T1 minus T infinity into C2 divided by 3 uh, plus U C1 by C2. This is equation C. So you see that these equations are quite uh, highly nonlinear, and uh, solving for them uh, just by elimination is not straightforward. So these needs to be solved. Maybe one needs to uh, uh, do complex uh, arithmetic, uh, complex algebraic uh, substitutions in order to solve these, uh, because uh, you cannot uh, numerically solve them also because there is also this g beta into t wall minus t infinity uh, term that comes. So that has to be given a numerical value in order to solve that. So we will not be able to solve it unless you give numerical values to alpha, g beta, k quantities and u and all that. So you actually have to get the analytical uh, solution for these which will themselves become complicated expressions in uh, all of these quantities. Okay. So you uh, can do that and uh, can then get the expressions. And after that uh, we already have derived this nux is equal to 2x by delta t. Okay, that's what we had uh, defined in the last class. Uh, we said uh, nux is 2x by delta. Then the delta and delta t were equal. Whereas in this case, the uh, uh, nu okay, this uh, k into t all minus t infinity it will be delta t, and therefore that will be the delta t term that will come here. Okay, so you will have a 2x by uh, delta t as a uh, expression and this will be substituted from whatever we get here. So this delta t is nothing but uh, if you say uh, delta t by delta is uh, zeta, then delta t is zeta into delta. That will be delta into zeta which is going to be equal to zeta times c2 x to the power of n. So once you and n uh, you can Solve in the same fashion, you'll basically get um, uh, m is equal to 0 0.5 and n is equal to 0 0.7. So they are the same as uh, the case when the delta and delta t get equal. Okay, so those quantities uh, would still uh, come out to be the same. But uh, sorry, uh, let's see what have I done? Equal to 0 0.5 is correct. Uh, n is equal to half and n is equal to 1 by 4. Right. So those will come out to be the same as uh, earlier. 
So once you get the C1, C2 and uh, zeta from here, you substitute for zeta and C2 here and uh, n is equal to 1 by 4, you will get the delta T and therefore you can get uh, 2x by delta T as the expression. Okay, so this will be the expression and uh, using this uh, we can get this number. Okay, so once you solve for uh, C1, C2 and zeta from here, then you get this number. That's the uh, expression. So this is equal to 2x divided by uh, zeta c2 into x bar minus 1 by 4. Okay, so this will go as x to the power of 3 by 4, which will eventually be part of a uh, ra to the power of 1 by 4 expression. Okay, so that's what is basically what you get. Okay, so I'll uh, leave it here for uh, this one. Um, in uh, Bayjan's textbook, what he does is, is uh, choosing a slightly different kind of uh, profiles, um, uh, more of exponential uh, profiles, because um, the polynomial profiles will never eventually go to uh, uh, zero gradients uh, can continue to remain in zero gradients as uh, y tends to infinity. So uh, what Bayjan does uh, profiles for a little letter so if you remember we have used uh, u by u max is equal to uh, y by delta into 1 minus y by delta whole square and uh, t minus t all t by t minus t infinity divided by t all minus t infinity is equal to 1 minus y by delta t the whole square. So this is the expression that we have used but what Bayjan uses are slightly different. So for uh, Prandtl number greater than 1 uh, he uses a profile uh, which looks like u by u max is equal to or rather u by you can say some capital U it may not be equal to u max uh, u by some capital U uh, e to the power of minus y by delta into 1 minus e to the power of minus y by delta this is the velocity profile he uses and uh, t minus t infinity divided by t wall minus t infinity is equal to uh, e to the power of minus y by delta t. So this is the two uh, velocity profile and temperature profile that uh, he chooses to use and uh, using this um, he uh, puts it into the equation and integrates. Uh, he uh, defines a q which is delta divided by delta t which is actually equal to 1 by xi in our case, uh, 1 by zeta, okay. So we had used, um, uh, so I'm saying zeta is actually a xi, okay. So 1 by xi, so uh, we had used the xi which is delta t by delta, so he uses a q which is d delta by delta t. So what is the equation that he gets? He gets um, by integrating from uh, 0 to infinity, uh, he gets the momentum equation in the form of d by dx times u square into delta into q square divided by 2 into 2 plus q into 1 plus q is equal to minus u q by delta into u into q by delta plus g beta into T1 minus T infinity into delta by Q. So this is the momentum equation he gets. So let us say this is equation 1 and um, from momentum, integral momentum equation. Similarly from the integral energy equation he gets T by dx of uh, U Q uh, divided by 1 plus Q into 2 plus Q, 1 plus 2 Q 
is equal to alpha by delta. So this is the second equation you get. And the third equation exactly in the same form uh, we use uh, mu into uh, 10 squared u by del y square plus g beta into t wall minus t infinity is this at y equal to 0 equal to 0. This is the equation that we use. So in this you substitute for uh, u and uh, uh, differentiate u with respect to y and find the next expression. So this becomes the third equation. Okay, so using these three equations, uh, he tries to uh, solve and uh, get the solutions. So I'll just write down whatever solutions he finds. So he finds that uh, this q is independent of x like uh, what we have said, but is a function only of Prandtl number. So he gets uh, Prandtl number is equal to uh, 5 by 6 into q square multiplied by q plus half divided by q plus 2. Okay, so this is the expression he gets, so the relationship between Prandtl and uh, q and uh, he gets the expression for n u x which again would work out to be uh, 2x by delta t and uh, this uh, he gets as uh, 3 by 8 multiplied by q cube divided by uh, q plus 1 into q plus half into q plus 2 multiplied the whole thing raised to the power of 1 by 4 into Rax raised to the power of 1 by 4. So this is the expression he gets for uh, frontal number greater than 1. And for frontal number less than 1, he goes with an entirely different set of uh, variables. So instead of using uh, delta and delta t, he uses delta u and delta t. If you recall the Prandtl number less than 1 uh, profile, so you will get a temperature profile which goes quite deep into the flow field. So this is your delta t and uh, the velocity profile will show a maximum right here and then it will also drag along and get here. So this will be your delta but uh, there will be a delta u where u is equal to u max. Okay, so this is your velocity profile u and this is your temperature profile t going from t u all to t infinity. So this is the profile. So this delta u and delta t is what uh, he says and uh, he chooses uh, uh, velocity profile or uh, u, u by u as um, e to the power of minus y by delta t outside. So earlier this, this was delta, now this is delta t multiplied by 1 minus e to the power of minus y by delta u. So this is basically what he uh, uses, that this delta u is the expression that he is trying to bring in because the relationship between delta u and delta t has always been or has already been shown to be a function of frontal number. So he uh, can just uses that factor that there is a q1 which is uh, defined as delta u by delta t okay and using this uh, he does it. The temperature profile remains the same uh, as t minus t wall, uh, t minus t infinity by t wall minus t infinity is e to the power of minus y by delta t. So these two profiles he uses and using q1 is equal to this. He derives that uh, Prandtl number is equal to 5 by 3 into q1 divided by 1 plus q1, okay, so this is the relationship and uh, nux uh, is equal to 3 by 8 whole thing raised to the power of 1 by 4 multiplied by q1 divided by 2q1 plus 1 whole thing raised to half 
multiplied by R A X to the power of minus one by four. So this is the profile that uh, he is getting. And in uh, the limits, uh, what he shows is as uh, Prandtl number goes much greater than one, uh, he takes the limit of this as Prandtl number goes much greater than one, and shows that uh, N U X as 0 0.783 uh, R A X the power of 1 by 4. So the power R A X to the power of 1 by 4 is uh, respected like in your uh, 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 order of magnitude analysis. And similarly for frontal number much less than 1, he shows N U X is 0 0.689 R A X B R whole thing is the power of 1 by 4. Okay, so which is also respecting the order of magnitude analysis that we said. So this is uh, basically the two results that I wanted to just uh, give you. Uh, although I have uh, not been able to completely derive either of these expressions um, within the limited time that I was trying to work on it. Uh, these are the, uh, the two results that uh, we can make available. So you can actually have uh, integral profiles for uh, velocity and temperature and hence expression for use of number. Okay. So this is uh, uh, what we have about the constant wall temperature conditions or natural convection or what it is like. Now if I uh, go to constant wall flux condition, what do I mean by constant wall flux condition? So if I have a vertical flat plate, then the heat flux is constant throughout the length of it. So Q dot double prime wall is constant. It is independent of X. In the previous case we had the T wall is constant. Now we have a Q wall is constant. So if I uh, start from this and uh, write down uh, the relationship for uh, the wall heat flux, then I will get Q dot double prime wall, this is equal to minus K into, uh, or this is of the order of, let's say, minus K into T wall minus T into AT divided by delta T. So this is your uh, expression. So if I write this as uh, delta T, uh, then this is of the order of uh, K delta T by Okay, so this is an expression which is valid whether it is constant wall flux or constant wall temperature. So in the case of constant wall temperature, it is this quantity that is constant and therefore the Q would go as 1 by delta T, right? So that's basically what uh, we had. As the border layer grows thicker, the heat flux is to decrease. Uh, but then um, the case where Q wall is a constant, then the delta T and delta T they go in the same fashion so that their ratio remains a constant. Okay. So as the boundary layer grows thicker, the temperature difference also increases in the same proportion so that their ratio remains a constant. So Q1 is a constant. So this is uh, how you understand the uh, constant wall flux condition. Now we know that uh, for frontal number greater than 1, we have this result as delta T by H. Uh, is of the order of, because this we obtained from the energy equation and there is no assumption of the wall conditions here. So delta T by H uh, is of the order of G beta delta T uh, into, um, so this is delta T at any X if you would like and this will be X cube. Uh, so this is delta T by X is this X cube divided by mu alpha, so this is the Rayleigh number, Rax to the power of minus 1 by 4. So this is the result that uh, we have available. So if I uh, bring the x here and uh, put them together, then I will get the dependence of uh, uh, delta t on x. So delta t of x is actually equal to x times g beta delta t divided by mu alpha whole to the power of minus 1 by 4 into x to the power of minus 3 by 4. Okay, so this is your uh, expression. Um, 
Now, if I substitute for delta t from this expression, so from here it will be delta t would be equal to uh, q dot w prime wall into delta t pi k, this is of the order, okay. So then um, this is of the order, right. So um, if I substitute for this delta t, then I will get a uh, is of the order of uh, x times um, g or uh, x to the power of 1 by 4 if you would like, let that be here, x, x to the x of 3 by 4, uh, g beta by mu alpha to the power of 1 by 4 multiplied by, I can write this as uh, q dot double prime wall into delta t, okay, divided by k to the power of 1 by 4. Now, uh, if I uh, take this delta t to the power of 1 by 4 to uh, the, this side, uh, this is minus on the four side. Okay, so this delta t to the power of 1 by 4 to this side, so it will become delta t to the power of 5 by 4. So, I will get a delta t to the power of 5 by 4, okay, um, is um, of the order. So now this is uh, to the power of 5 by 4, um, there will be a x to the power of 1 by 4 that stays here and the remaining terms will uh, join together. So it will be a g beta into q dot double prime fall divided by mu alpha k all to the power of minus 1 by 4. Okay, or if I uh, take the 4 by 5 power of uh, the two sides, because I want delta t, this implies delta t is of the order of this whole thing to the power of 4 by 5, so I will get an x to the power of 1 by 5 uh, here, okay, and um, multiplied by g beta into q dot double prime wall divided by u alpha k whole thing to the power of minus 1 by 4 will become minus 1 by 5, okay. So now if I define uh, R A star x as um, uh, g beta um, q dot double prime wall into x to the power of 4 divided by mu alpha k. If this is the uh, R star, so there is the x to the power of 4. So I can actually write um, uh, delta t by x is of the order. So there will be an x to the power of 4 by 5 which will go inside here uh, is of the order of uh, g beta into q dot double prime ball into x to the power of 4 divided by mu alpha k whole thing to the power of minus 1 by 5. So this goes as R A star x raised to the power of minus 1 by 5. So instead of the minus 1 by 4 uh, result, this is R A star x which is defined in terms of q dot double prime uh, in this fashion. So the, it becomes a function of R A star to the power of minus 1 by 5 instead of minus 1 by 4, okay. So this is for uh, parental number uh, greater than 1 and uh, using the, okay, this, the uh, nu x is uh, actually x by delta t is what uh, you will get, nu x is equal to x by delta t is what you will get. So this will go as um, uh, R A star so this is delta t by x, this is r a star to the power of 1 by 5, okay. So the, the Kandasal number goes as r a star to the power of 1 by 5. So that is what you get for frontal number greater than 1. The same fashion for uh, frontal number less than 1, uh, the result would be like delta t would go as uh, x times r a x star p r to the power of minus 1 by 5. Okay, so this is basically what you would get and therefore um, nu x 
which is x by delta, which is on the order of x by delta. This will go as R A x cross r yeah, to the power of 1 plus 10. Okay. And uh, in both of these cases, we can actually get delta t is of the order of q dot double prime by k into x uh, multiplied by r x star r yeah, to the power of minus 1 plus 10. Okay, so this is the result for frontal number less than 1, which is the for frontal number less than 1. This is the order of magnitude analysis. If uh, we do an integral analysis, I have not done this. This is from uh, Bayesian that I am giving you the result. Uh, NUX becomes uh, 2 by 360 raised to the power of 1 by 5 multiplied by uh, frontal number divided by 4 by 5 plus frontal number. This whole thing raised to the power of 1 by 5 into R star. X cross So this will be the result, which uh, actually is derived by assuming delta is approximately equal to delta t. Using that, you derive this. But uh, what is found is that this is valid for a whole frontal number range of 0 0.01 is less than or equal to pr is less than or equal to 100. So 10 to the power of minus 2 to the power of plus 2, four orders of magnitude of frontal number. This becomes Valid, so it actually uh, agrees well with experiment for this entire range. Okay. So these are the results for uh, constant wall flux or constant uh, Q wall. The power becomes 1 by 5 instead of 1 by 4, which uh, happened in the case of the constant wall temperature boundary condition. Okay. So that is the change that happens when you go from constant wall temperature to constant wall flux in the case of laminar. Okay, so I hope uh, that much is comfortable. Now what we will do is to briefly discuss uh, the turbulent boundary layer or a vertical flat plate. In fact, there are not too many um, analysis that you uh, find for uh, the solution of turbulent uh, boundary layer or a vertical flat plate, um, but um, there is an integral solution that's available due to Eckert and Jackson. Again, assuming uh, delta and delta t to be uh, similar, and uh, the method is ex ex exactly similar to the method that we just uh, showed for uh, laminar, except that the assumption of the velocity profile is different, and the way the wall shear stress is evaluated as uh, different. But other than that, the methods look very similar and you can actually get results which are reasonably in agreement with uh, experimental measurements. But then um, Churchill and Chu's experimental data uh, correlated to uh, uh, correlation, correlated to an equation for constant wall temperature and a slightly different expression for constant wall flux seem to be a very accurate uh, relationship for both laminar and uh, turbulent uh, flows. So it is valid all the way from uh, 10 to the power of minus 1 Rayleigh number to 10 to the power of 12 Rayleigh number, where actually the transition from laminar to turbulent typically happens at the Grashof number of 10 to the power of 9. So for frontal number of the order of 1, it is Rayleigh number of the order of 10 to the power of 9. So the experimental data are reasonably reliable and accurate. So uh, people normally don't worry too much about uh, the other solution methods, but here I would just uh, present to you for historical importance the integral analysis for the turbulent boundary layer over a vertical flat. Turbulent border layer over a uh, vertical flat plate. So, uh, suppose this is my y direction and this is my x direction. 
the flow remains laminar until a certain value of x beyond which the flow starts becoming turbulent just like in the case of uh, the flat plate boundary layer and uh, this seems to correspond to a Grashof number of 10 to the power of 9 around this order. So what is Grashof number? Grashof number is g beta t wall minus t infinity. So again we come back to constant wall temperature here, t wall is equal to constant. So we'll also present the results for q1 equal to constant from x variables, but uh, this is what we'll analyze now into uh, x q divided by q square. So this is your Grashof number. Uh, what uh, uh, has been shown is that for Grashof number of the order of 10 to the power of 9, for all frontal number, the flow transition to Okay, so for uh, Grashof numbers less than 10 to the power of 9, you can use the laminar flow relations that we have uh, derived so far. And for Grashof number greater than uh, 10 to the power of 9, we will need to use the turbulent flow uh, relationships. Okay, so the integral equations of the boundary layer um, remain the same as before. Uh, T by dx of integral from 0 to uh, delta of u square dy. Okay is equal to g beta integral from 0 to delta of t minus t infinity dy uh, minus mu times del u by del y and y equal to 0 and similarly for the energy equation t by dx of integral from 0 to delta t of u into t minus t infinity dy uh, is equal to uh, is equal to uh, minus alpha del t by del y now uh, this and this uh, what um, was done uh, Eckert and Jack Jackson first published an integral solution for this and in uh, doing the integral solution um, since we know that uh, we need to assume uh, turbulent velocity profiles which is valid for the entire domain but near the wall they uh, typically fail and therefore uh, instead of using that profile for calculating the wall shear they use the um, uh, sta standard uh, expressions that are available um, from uh, Prandtl's 1 7th power law for the vertical for the flat plate boundary layer, turbulent boundary layer, and use that result here. So let me just explain that a little bit more clearly. So for turbulent flow over a flat plate. So this is the uh, force convection flat plate that I am uh, trying to refer to. We use this profile u plus is equal to 8.75 into y plus raised to the power of 1 by 7. Okay. So this is the profile that we said. But this profile if we go to uh, y equal to 0, we will get a uh, okay, infinity because uh, there will be a problem of u becoming 0, y becoming 0 and so on and so forth. So the derivative is going to land into trouble. So what we try to do is to evaluate this at certain y equal to delta. So what Eckert and Jackson did is uh, for the natural convection boundary layer, they defined a velocity profile u by capital U is equal to y by delta raised to the power of 1 by 7 multiplied by uh, 1 minus y by delta whole square, the whole to the power of 4. Okay, so this is the velocity profile that they defined and using this u, what they said is, I substitute y is equal to delta in this expression, then I substitute velocity capital U. 
So if I expand this, it actually becomes u by u uh, u star, which is square root of the wall by rho, is actually equal to 8.75 multiplied by uh, y into square root of the wall by rho divided by mu, whole thing raised to the power of uh, 1 by 7. Okay, so this is the velocity profile. So what um, Eckerton Jackson said is, when I substitute this y is equal to delta, this u will be capital U. So that is the change that they made. So in the case of uh, flat plate boundary layer, uh, we actually did this as u infinity at y equal to delta. Instead of that, we use this capital U. So uh, what we get from here is that you get uh, capital U divided by square root of the wall by rho is equal to 8.75 multiplied by uh, delta into square root of the wall by rho uh, divided by mu over to the power of 1 by 7. So from this, if I take out the wall by rho to one side and simplify, I will get Cf by 2, which is actually the wall by rho u square, where u is this u. Okay. This is actually not u max. What we will see is that if I uh, differentiate this, then I will get a different value of u max. I will given the relationship between u max and this u in a y. Now this would be equal to, you will get, you can actually simplify this, you will get a 0 0.225 into 0 0.0225, sorry, 0.0225 multiplied by u delta by mu, the whole thing is the power of minus 1 by 4. Okay, so this is the expression that we will get. I, I was able to derive, so you should also be able to derive this uh, expression. Okay, so that is what um, is used for um, the tau wall term that will come here. So in this uh, this term, you write it as equal to uh, minus tau wall by rho, and this tau wall by rho is substituted from here. Similarly, this is written as q dot double prime wall divided by OCP. That is this expression. And this q dot double prime wall by rho cp is substituted for from the same expression, but by using Colburn analogy. What is Colburn analogy? Stanton number into Prandtl to the power of 2 by 3 is equal to c of by 2. Right? So we use that. So the Stanton number is nothing but uh, q dot wall double prime divided by rho u rho, rho capital U C P into T wall minus T infinity. We also know this is uh, this is standard number. Standard number is also equal to nu x divided by uh, nu by uh, R E P R. This is the expression that we would typically use in uh, force convention flows. In this case, it will be just this expression Q wall divided by this. This is equal to uh, C F by two is this. 0 0.0225 into u delta by u over the power of minus 1 by 4 into plant to the power of minus 2 by 3. Okay, so then uh, so the q wall by rho cp, q dot double prime wall divided by rho c, which is what we have to write on the right hand side of this equation, that will be written as uh, so you can take the u wall, u and t wall minus t infinity here. So you have 0 0.0225 to u into t wall minus t infinity multiplied by Prandtl to the power of minus 2 by 3 into u delta by u whole thing to the power of minus 1 by 4. Okay, so this is substituted there. So if I use whatever I have written on the right hand side here uh, to substitute for uh, the right hand side of uh, momentum equation with this expression and the right hand side of the energy equation with this expression and then in the velocity profiles I substitute u by u. I told you that if I integrate this, uh, sorry, if I differentiate this and equate to 0 to get u max, I get u max device equal to capital U divided by 0 0.537. Okay, so it's actually not, uh, capital U is not the same as U max, but it is at a different location. Maybe you can take it as some mean velocity, right? So that's the expression that you have. So this is 0.537 times U max.
Okay. Um, this you can actually derive by differentiating this and equating it to zero and finding out what the values you have. Okay. Now um, the temperature profile T minus T infinity divided by T wall minus T infinity is uh, substituted as one minus y by delta t all to the power of oh sorry one minus y by delta t to the power of one by itself. Okay. So this is the uh, temperature profile that I will uh, substitute. So when I do these uh, substitutions and uh, do the integration, I get let me just go to the next page. So uh, momentum equation, momentum integral equation gives me d by dx of u squared delta multiplied by integral from 0 to 1. Uh, if I write uh, eta is equal to y by delta. Okay, and for turbulent flows, I can write delta T is approximately equal to delta for turbulent flows. So I'll just use this approximation in uh, this integral method as well, just like what the squares method did. So this integral of uh, eta to the power of two by seven. So this is from u square into one minus eta whole to the power of eight multiplied by d eta and that is equal to uh, g beta into t wall minus t infinity into delta multiplied by um, integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus eta to the power of 1 by 7 d eta okay plus the uh, last term which I write from the uh, shear stress expression so this is uh, so this is minus rather minus um, yeah minus Uh, 0 0.0225 multiplied by capital U square into uh, U delta pi U over the power of minus 1 by 4. Okay, so this is your uh, first expression. So you have two integrals to perform here. This is one integral and this is another integral. I am not going into details of this integration now, but I have uh, integrated this and found this value to be 0 0.0523 and I have integrated this and found this value to be 1 by 8. Okay, you can confirm this if you would like. So this equation then would simplify to 0 0.0523 d by dx of u squared delta is equal to uh, g beta into t wall minus t infinity into delta divided by 8 minus 0 0.0225 u square into u delta by u or to the power of minus 1 by 2. So this is let us say equation A that comes here and uh, similarly for the energy equation so this let me box it here so that it's clearly visible from this page. And similarly, I write d by dx of uh, u delta into t wall minus t infinity integral um, from 0 to 1 of uh, eta to the power of 1 by 7 into 1 minus eta to the power of 4 multiplied by 1 minus eta to the power 1 by 7 into d eta. Okay, so this is t, or t minus t infinity and this is u. Um, 
this is equal to um, the right hand side we can write as 0 0.0225 multiplied by u into cancel to the power of minus 2 by 3 um, into u delta by u to the power minus from here, uh, sorry, the U, T1 minus T2, T1 minus T2. Now the T1 minus T infinity here is a constant and here also it's not a function of X, it can be taken. So this T1 minus T infinity actually cancels out between the two sides. And this integration, if I perform, it gives me 0 0.03663. Okay, so that's my uh, integration. So I'll be able to rewrite this equation as 0 0.03663. 3663 into d by dx of u delta is equal to 0 0.0225 u number to power minus 2 by 3 into u delta by u over the power of minus 1 by 4. So this is the six second equation that I would like to box. This is equation B. Now, in A and B, you have two equations and two unknowns. Capital U is one unknown and delta is the other unknown. So, in order to solve for them, I substitute U is equal to C1 x to the power of M and delta is equal to C2 x to the power of N and then make sure that the equation has homogeneous powers of X in order to determine M and N. So, if I do that, so there is a U squared delta here. So, it will be C1 squared x to the power of 2M and C2 into x to the power of n. C1, C2 are constants, so it can be taken out. So I'll get 0 0.0523 into C1 squared C2, and I'll get x to the power of 2m plus n. So when I differentiate that, 2m plus n will come out, and x to the power of 2m plus n minus 1. So I'll have a 2m plus n minus 1 x power here. What I'll get here is uh, C2 x to the power of n, so it's just n here. And what is the x to the power that I will get here? It will be uh, C1 x to the power of 2m, so there will be a 2m here. And this will be m to the power of minus 1 by 4. So it will be 2m minus m to the power of uh, 2m multiplied by m by 4, minus m by 4. It will be uh, 7m by 4. Okay. And uh, n will be minus 1 by 4 minus n by 4. So these are the expressions that uh, I'll have. So I'll equate this to this to this and solve for M and N. Similarly, I can, in this expression, uh, there is a C1, C2 which will come out. There will be M plus N. So there will be M plus N minus 1 when I differentiate this. Uh, M plus N minus 1. And on the uh, right hand side, I'll have a M here. And there will be M to the power of uh, M uh, by 4 here. So this will be 3m by 4 and n will be minus n by 4. Okay, so that will be the power of uh, m and n that I have. So if I equate this and solve for m and n, I will get uh, m is equal to 0 0.5 and n is equal to 0 0.7. You can verify this. This is what I wrote by mistake in the previous uh, Evaluation. So the m is equal to 0 0.5, n is equal to 0 0.7 comes as part of the thing. So actually your delta uh, is then known to go as x to the power of 0 0.7, whereas the u goes as x to the power of 0 0.5, which is the similar case as the case of lambda 2, right? So that is the expression that I get here. So now putting these um, and uh, then cancelling out the x, then I'll get two equations again. Um, um, I'm not going to do the algebra here, but uh, this is one equation in which the x powers will cancel out. So I'll get a C1 square C2 in this one. There is a C2 here, and there is a C1, and there is a C1 C2 raised to the power of minus 1 by 4. So there is one equation in C1 and C2 here. Similarly, there is another equation in C1 and C2 here. I have to solve for those uh, two together to get C1 and C2. And once I get them, I can substitute and uh, get the value, the Nusselt number, okay? So the Nusselt number
in your x is equal to q dot double prime uh, wall divided by t wall minus t infinity. This is h into x by k. Okay, and uh, in uh, the equation that we derived for the wall flux, the wall flux, uh, we got this q dot q dot double prime divided by t wall minus t infinity will be rho u c p times this whole thing. So I can substitute that here, and uh, so q dot double prime wall divided by t wall minus t infinity is equal to uh, 0 0.0225 rho u c p multiplied by what else do you have? O u c p to t or t one minus t infinity into transit for two by three and u delta by uh, t one minus t infinity multiplied by u delta u delta u delta by minus minus Okay, so uh, I know the values of uh, this u and delta because now c and uh, uh, this one are known. So for every x, I'll be able to evaluate this. So n u x can be now evaluated using substituting this uh, into this expression. Okay. So um, basically, you get an n u x is equal to x by k multiplied by rho u c t into t one minus t infinity. Um, Sorry, T1 minus T infinity will be cancelled. Sorry. So it's going to be divided by T1 minus T infinity. So that's. Oh, the T1 minus T infinity should not be changed. Okay. So rho u c p uh, into 0 0.0225 into u delta by u raised to the power of at this is the p r to the power of minus 2 minus 3 and it's not times 4 r to the power of minus 2 by 3. So this is the expression that I'll uh, get and uh, here I can substitute uh, for this as c1 x to the power of m and this as c2 x to the power of n and uh, then some uh, substitute and simplify and uh, eventually I'll get uh, this expression as uh, n u x is equal to 0 0.0295 multiplied by r a x to the power of 2 by 5 and Prandtl to the power of in, into multiplied by Prandtl divided by 1 plus 0 0.494 into Prandtl raised to the power of 2 by 3, whole thing raised to the power of 2 by 5. Okay, this is the expression that uh, eventually you will have to come out of this when I substitute the solutions of uh, C1 and C2 from these two equations into this expression. Okay, so there we are. Uh, this is for constant T1. Um, now Churchill and Chu, they did experiments and got a very accurate uh, correlation for nu bar x uh, equal to 0 0.825 plus 0 0.387 Rax to the power of 1 by 6 divided by 1 plus 0 0.492 divided by TR whole to the power of 9 by 16 and this square bracket raised to the power of 8 by 27 and this curly bracket square. Okay, this is a very complicated uh, expression but then what happens is it's actually Going, going as Rax raised to the power of 1 by 3. That's the interesting part that you get. 
similarly um, for uh, constant q dot double prime wall same kind of Churchill and Churchill show expression when you are x there is a very minor modification from this expression so it's again 0 0.825 plus 0 0.387 to R A X to the power of 1 by 6 divided by square bracket 1 plus now this number will be slightly different 0 0.437 divided by bracket number times the power of 9 by 16 whole thing raised to the power of 8 by 27 Okay, so this is the Churchill and Shoe correlation for constant wall flux, which is slightly different from this. So what is interesting in all of this, and uh, there are other correlations also, in which what you will find is that the NU X as well as NU X bar, that is the average from uh, leading edge up to this point, uh, both of these, NU X as well as N, and NU bar X, both of these, are proportional to R A X raised to the power of 1 by 3, which is a very interesting thing because um, if I go to the next page and show this, um, N U X or N U bar X will be H X by K or N U bar X will be H bar to X by K. And this if it goes as R A X to the power of 1 by 3, what is R A X? G beta into T wall minus T infinity into X cube divided by mu alpha whole to the power of 1 by 3. So there is a X to the power of 3 raised to the power of 1 by 3. So there is a X that comes out here. That X and X get cancelled. So what happens is the H is independent of X. Similarly here again you will get uh, uh, G beta into T1 minus T infinity into X cube divided by mu alpha all to the power of uh, 1 by 3. So uh, what you see is that uh, this X cube to the power of 1 by 3 cancels out on both sides. So H bar is independent of X. So this is quite an interesting result that we get in turbulent uh, boundary layers of uh, natural convection that the average heat transfer coefficient as well as the local heat transfer coefficient become independent of X in turbulent energy. So H and H bar are reasonably independent of X in turbulent vertical flat plate flow. both for constant T wall and constant T. So this is a very interesting and important uh, result that we get in the turbulent natural connection. So that was a marathon uh, lecture. So we'll uh, take a breather here and um, close natural convection with uh, that and uh, in the next couple of lectures maybe two or maybe three lectures we will try to look at uh, heat transfer with phase change boiling and condensation from the convective heat transfer model. So we will stop that with uh, stop the natural convection with uh, this and uh, in the next class 